Welcome to CFDB Interviews, and we are here today with Arturo Moishant, producer, actor, writer, and lead actor in The Pastor, which is coming to theaters January 25th, which is very shortly. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Do I have your permission to start recording the interview? Yes, please. Okay, of course. So first of all, can you please tell us a little bit about your role within the Christian film industry, as well as a little bit about your production company, Wolfgang Cinema? Thank you, Emily. Really, really excited to be here with you today. And thank you very much for, for the time and, and, and the space to share um, some information about my upcoming project, um, the, the, the pastor. The, um, the, 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 the conception of uh, putting a film company together uh, first started out as a uh, mission to um, get to share socially relevant stories that would be redeeming, inspiring, and that could entertain, educate, and change people's lives. Excellent. And if you, if you look around at the greatest stories we have, uh, they're all in one way or another Bible-based. The archetypes, the, the, the uh, arcs and the characters are very biblical. And I was trying to find a way of making that relevant for uh, young audiences today, not only for older audiences, although the, the stories and the films will encompass all audiences, I was trying to find a way to make that relevant and exciting again, especially as you look to faith-based films. I personally think that we lacked that sort of, um, um, how would I call it, uh, uh, a little bit more uh, stylistic and engaging in the type of uh, filmmaking that we are usually uh, accustomed to. So that was the, the, the mission, and now we have the first film to come out of that effort, and it's called The Pastor. That's excellent. So you had mentioned uh, that this is actually for all ages, this particular film. Yes, yes. It, it, it's one of those films that deals with youth. So certainly, you know, we, we, we want to speak to uh, a young audience. But because of the nature of the spiritual transformation of the character, my character in the film, um, it's it's universal, Great. and it's a, he's a character that starts as a um, a man who's in total darkness and then comes out uh, shining through God's light, and decides to protect his uh, community, and that means everybody in the community, starting with the young kids all the way up to the uh, to the older people in the community. Well, that sounds great, and that's that's more about what the film is actually about. Uh, believe it or not, we just saw a trailer for it in the theater just yesterday. <laughs> ah, so, fantastic! Yeah, yeah that's what great. film. What film were you watching? We were actually watching The Masked Saint. Ah, fantastic! And it was one of the one of the uh, trailers beforehand, and it definitely inspired us to want to to watch it as soon as it comes out. Definitely want to, to see it opening weekend. And uh, it sounds like it has a, a great message. So what was the inspiration behind the film? You know, um, I had been uh, doing research with uh, our youth and gangs for a number of years. And I had been with uh, them and, and their communities all throughout the United States, some parts of Latin America and in the jails as well. And I had always wanted to find my way in as a storyteller into that world and to create a film that could um, generate awareness for what's going on it can, and that could also inspire people to find God and to find a, a better path in life. But I didn't want to exploit that world, the violence in that world, which, you know, it has been done effectively. You know, the, the, you know those films sell a lot of tickets, but I, I just didn't want to do that. It wasn't who, who I was or, or what I standed, you know, I stood for as a as a storyteller so i um i waited i waited i started in 2005 and then at my lowest of lowest of moments in this journey of mine i was uh here in new york where I'm, I'm, i am today at the united nations um working on another project and that project fell, fell through uh we couldn't put it together um i lost a lot of money i uh, had to send my wife and two young children back to los angeles and i stayed here for for about six or eight weeks by myself uh, and in desperation, a couple of days of no sleep, a lot of praying, this story of the pastor came to me. 
And it was as if God had spoken to me saying, you know what, you've been looking at this world for almost 10 years now. And, you know, you have now um, my my mandate is for you to share this story in such a way that it can inspire all those young kids who are either in the gangs or about to get into the gangs because that's what their brothers did before them or their friends did before them. You have the chance to go out and speak about my work, about my word, and share the story to the world. So that's that's in, in, in three days. I, I set out and, and, and fleshed out the story. That was in October of 2013. In April of 2014, um, everything was ready. We, I had a script in place, and you know these things take years, as you know. So it was really God's work. That's an amazing story. I'm so glad that you shared that with us. I know that that will be an inspiration to other people as well, because it does seem like sometimes things fall through and we just don't understand why. And sometimes it's at a great loss, but yet I guess out of the ashes comes something beautiful a lot of times. Had it not been um, uh, that I found myself in that you know desperate moment uh, this story wouldn't be out today. That's for sure. So like you say, yeah, it's, 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 it's marvelous the way that, you know, even when we feel that we're, we're facing a great obstacle, a great failure, you know, one door might close, but another even bigger might open. And that's certainly what happened here. And that's the way God works. A lot of times we can't always yes. see it right away. And then, and then suddenly something happens and you know, he's been there. <laughs> yes. Yes, for sure. So, so have there been any, unique experiences besides that one that happened maybe during or after making the film where you knew God's hand was specifically on it? Oh, yes, yes. Many, many, many. Um, I can I can tell you um, as an actor, uh, this was a very challenging role for me because it was a, a, a multi-layered role where, where you had to portray a guy, uh, a man who had been a, a gang leader, a very bad man, who finds God and, you know, in time becomes a, 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 a uh, an honorable protector of his community. And, you know, he becomes a pastor and, and you know how pastors are in real life. You know, these guys talk and talk and talk about God, talk and talk about the Bible. And it's not easy for, for an actor to go out there and have to have, you know, 25 pages of dialogue for one day. <laughs> Usually, you know, big movies, you know, we have two pages a day, two and a half pages a day. Here we had, you know, close to 20 sometimes of direct dialogue. And I, I didn't know how I was going to do it, no matter how much training I did beforehand. And once I, on the first day, we decided to tackle the the, 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 the toughest, uh, uh, which is a sermon, the first sermon my character gets to give out as an ordained pastor. And it just, you know, it, I reached a certain flow that I'd never experienced in my work before. And that's God. I just have no other way of explaining it. And the whole experience was like that. Um, on the more uh, business side of things, you know, we, we lost a couple of distribution offers right after the movie was completed. And, um, you know, how much resistance we get uh, as faith-based filmmakers out in the mainstream world. And, you know, I had to find a way to take this message out into the Christian market, uh, no matter what. And I ended up uh, partnering directly with um, the movie theaters through uh, a company called Fathom. Great. Owned by AMC Regal and Cinemark. Um, and uh, long story short, it's all been God's work and, and it's been very prevalent, everything that I'm doing. Yeah, ab absolutely. It's it's amazing to see, see his work and it sounded like the Holy Spirit was there is there the whole time and uh, I'm glad you were able to use Fathom. Um, since you mentioned that, uh, maybe you could also uh, take a couple of minutes to explain how Fathom works. Yes, yes. I, listen, I, I've been working closely with them for a couple of months now and I thank the world of them. They're, they're a very serious organization. Um, they were partly owned by AMC, Regal and Cinemark, the largest three theater chains in the U.S. Um, and usually their, their trajectory has been in 
showcasing uh, concerts, like big concerts of uh, like big gangs, gang. I mean, here I'm talking about gangs, like, you know, <laughs> bands, not gangs. It's all, <laughs> it's all I find myself talking about now. Um, uh, it's uh, but you know what, bands and gangs are kind of the same thing. A group sort of people of. coming together, right? Right. Yeah, sort of. So um, uh, great bands. Like recently, I, I saw a uh, uh, Roger Waters slash Pink Floyd concert. Um, and con con concert uh, slash documentary film there, and they've done the Rolling Stones and the Met Opera here in, in New York. Um, and what they do is they they on one night they 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 have the ability to uh, to stream your film, your your concert, whatever you're doing, out and throughout uh, the entire uh, nation. And the model um, hasn't been used uh, for film. Uh, effectively before uh, so we, we wanted to uh, come together and experiment because it's a call to action it, it's 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 you know getting 400 theaters in place across the nation covering 41 states and you know this is targeted to the faith-based community so it's very specifically a call to action to say listen you know let's show the world we want these types of films out there we want to be represented up on the big screen and we don't want every film to be the same, you know, we want diversity and we want to be recognized as a as a um, legitimate um, legitimate uh, 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 um, uh, community with uh, a, a a smart sense of what a cinematic experience needs to be like, and that's you know that's what we're doing. So it's January twenty fifth on a Monday night, coming out in four hundred theaters across the nation. So will people be able to just type in? Uh, do they go to Fathom events to be able to get the tickets or? You, you, do, you can do a couple of things. I think um, one is to go to the, 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 our website, which is um, thepastorfilm.com. And then you can go to either group sales, where we have a group sales team working um, full time right now. We have a customer service number as well. They're ready to serve people. And then you can also click on uh, buying tickets or tickets. Uh, and it'll direct you to the Fathom page. Um, and again, it's, I, it's you know 400 and something um, uh, theaters across the nation. So it's 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 quite a large coverage. Okay, great. I just want to make sure that that people understood how to how to actually get the tickets, since it's a little bit different than the mainstream way. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So, the what would you think is the main message of the film that you want the viewers to experience? Well, I, I think the main message overall is the fact that, you know, it doesn't matter where we are in our lives. We can be in our darkest of darkest moments, like my character in the film is actually in jail and solitary confinement. We have the ability to change, to find God and to embrace his work, uh, embrace his philosophy of life and find complete and total inner peace and 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 in the sense of of of. Uh, of well-being that nothing else will give us no money or power or anything that you know that, that you can think that you might be after to make you happy that's not it you know this is the, 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 the real fuel that you know we all seek for as human beings and you know that's what i think uh i hope will touch uh both uh young and old alike because you know i i you know, we, we tend to think that only young people need God and young people need guidance and young people need transformations. Well, not necessarily. You know, we have people in, 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 in every age group that are in dark places uh, desperately needing to find God. That is so true. I'm actually praying that uh, you'll be able to get this film into the, the prisons as well because it sounds like it would be a good fit for them. Yes, yes, for sure. I'm, I'm, I am working with uh, several groups right now, uh, looking for others. Uh, one of them is Youth for Christ. Uh, they deal with um, at-risk youth all around the United States. They have 160 uh, centers, um, and um, they, they, they wanted for me to take the film to the prison system. Uh, I'm also now the global spokesperson for the Dream Center. That's a, a fantastic, um, um, you know, Christian, Christian institution in, in downtown LA. They've, yes. been, they've been working for. Do you know who they are? Yes, I have definitely heard of them. <laughs> oh, okay. No, listen, they're, they're, they're amazing. I'm, I'm actually uh, speaking about them here at the United Nations, and um, I'll be going ar around the country and around the world with them and the film to talk to our, you know, inner city at risk youth.
and and listen the beauty of this is who knows you know who knows how many people in prison will turn out to be pastors after this movie uh you know uh lights their, their life uh, you just don't never, never know maybe that's that's the ultimate mission here that's true touching lives everywhere but that would be fantastic i have uh for some reason i have in my heart a special place for gang members i i don't know why but Every time I see something or a film that's, you know, dealing with gang members, it, I end up always crying because I just, for some reason, my heart goes out to them and and I can't even imagine what they've been through, but I so want them to find Jesus and, you know, to find the peace, you know, that we've found. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm even more so looking forward to, to this film now after, after we've talked and spoken a little bit with each other. So I have to ask, do you have any um, any other upcoming faith projects that you might be involved with uh, in the future? Yes, yeah, so I have several. As a matter of fact, um, um, I have um, three uh, that I'm working on to getting now into production. One of them is a um, sort of faith-based Rocky uh, type of a story about a, a Christian MMA fighter um, that loses his... Uh, loses his wife uh, to cancer and 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 with that he loses his inner desire to to fight and to do anything else with his life um, and then he he th through his wife's uh, memories God speaks to him and he finds his the, his his strength in his spirit again to become the the, the athlete he once was um, so that's one and then I'm working on another one um, that deals with uh, another very socially relevant issue right now which is immigration and, and um, human trafficking and sexual slavery okay. um, that's uh, uh, a, an LA based police story that uh, um, deals with the fact that some churches are, are providing sanctuary to immigrants uh, no matter the cost and um, how a lot of uh, immigrants are lost between point A and point B uh, because they've been you know I don't want to say recruited because it's not the right word. They've been in prison and sexual slavery. Right. Um, so just like uh, I'm doing here with the gangs, um, that's another issue that I'm very passionate about because a lot of these women uh, are not, you know, getting the attention or the help they need, and yes. it's it's incredible to see what's really going out there. Yeah. And you mentioned a third one. Yes. Um, and uh, the the <laughs> the third one is a a story about a, uh, an investment banker um, up in New York back in the 90s who was the, you know, one of the wealthiest guys in town. And then very tragically during 9-11, he was at the World Trade Center and he, um, he was declared dead with, uh, uh, you know, everybody else in his investment bank. And, you know, he leaves a wife behind and he, everybody, you know, really, really is devastated. And then present time comes uh, into, the, into play and um, there's a rumor in the street that somebody has seen this man alive and that he actually never died. And, um, you know, a writer finds him. And now he is no longer the, the wealthy, rich guy uh, living in Manhattan. He's now a construction worker living in Queens, New York, helping poor people <laughs> uh, to, have, <laughs> to have a better way of life. And he shares what happened. And, and there's no doubt in his mind that God actually saved him for a reason. On that day and that reason was to become a servant of the poor wow yeah well i'm looking forward to all of them then <laughs> uh, we'll you. definitely have to keep our eyes and ears out out uh, for those coming up as well so is there anything that you would like to share with the christian film database listeners that hasn't already been covered well you, you, yes thank you Emily. Um, um this is the first time i will speaking i will be speaking about this um, but I'm at the United Nations right now. I've been invited here to be a speaker on their anniversary conference on poverty, inequality, and social violence at a global level. And I've, I've been in the pr very privileged position to be here today and speak about my, my life growing up in El Salvador amidst the civil wars, I was telling you in the beginning. And, you know, it, looking back, you know, it's been 35 years and nothing has changed. The equation is not even there not only there but it's even stronger poverty plus inequality will equal social violence and you know we had a a civil war in the mountainside now we have a gang war in the middle of the city 
And that's what I've seen not only down there, but in other countries of Central and Latin America and here in the United States. And I'm working very closely now with the Dream Center, as I was telling you, as our global spokesperson. And my mandate will be to go into the inner cities around the U.S. and into other cities uh, around the, the globe to start Dream Centers and to give these people the fundamental, um, to cover their fundamental needs, which is, you know, food, clothing, um, housing, education, and guidance, and, and try to tackle the problem from the roots. And um, so I'm very passionate about that. Um, I'll, I'll be working um, as an actor, as a, as a, as a uh, producer, as a filmmaker, um, uh, with, you know, wholeheartedly to take that effort into the next level. That's great. Sounds like you're doing exactly what Jesus would want you to do. <laughs> uh, like I said at the beginning, and I, I think this is a little bit of a, of a cliche uh, um, saying, but uh, I'm, I'm being just an instrument, a vehicle, a vessel here. Um, right. And it's, it's uh, uh, what he wants me to be doing. Right, exactly. So would you like to close with letting people know how they can learn more about you and your work? Yes, well, listen, thank you very much. We, we have a, a social media campaign, very active social media campaign going on right now. We have, we have Facebook and, and uh, Instagram. We have um, also a website, uh, thepastorfilm.com. Uh, like I mentioned before, you can not only buy their tickets, but fi find more information about everyone involved in the project, including myself. If you go to our YouTube channel, you'll find a couple of interviews that I've done recently about my personal journey, my work, and my upcoming films. Um, and that's one for TBN, another one for Enlace TV. I'm presently in the middle of a 10-day press tour for the film, and I'll be speaking at a national level uh, for, 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 for many days to come. So I'm very excited uh, to, to be here with you, Anneli, and, and uh, you, you are at the, uh, at, at the, at the very heart of, of what I'm doing. So thank you for your time. Yeah, uh, the Facebook page, what is the, how do they find it on Facebook? What's the name? Yes, it's uh, uh, The Pastor Film. If you go to our website, okay. thepastorfilm.com, right on the homepage, you will find the social media links that include Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Perfect. Thank you again for taking the time to talk with me today, Arturo. No. Uh, thank you, Anneli. You have been listening to CFDB Interviews. For more about CFDB, please check out our website at christianfilmdatabase.com.